Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is The Savage Nation, the show that all the jealous people in the media have come to listen to in order to hate it. I know the more that I'm bashed by people in radio who are has-beens, the more I know that uh, they realize how great the show has become. It's getting better every day, and I know what you really like. You know, in the crazy times with jihad everywhere, internal, external, with the enemy within the White House, the enemy within every aspect of government. Yeah, right, the enemy is everywhere. The people don't know which way to turn. The news is so awful. Crime is out of control. De Blasio is a psychopath. He takes down a picture of George Washington, puts up a picture of a revolutionary, and no one says a word. Obama got rid of the, uh, the bust of Winston Churchill. No one said a word. Right in front of your eyes, your country's been snatched out from under your eyes, and they're continuing to do it. No one says a word. And if you dare say a word, you're a right-wing racist. But you know what? They can go you nowhere. Get in their faces. Don't let them steal your country from you. Take it back from them. That's my opening. Good night and good luck. Now, of course, today there's lots of new news. And in addition to that, I know you're going to want me to do Bernie, Bernie Sanders questions. I just know that's all you want to hear. Uh, you know, I told you I'm new to Facebook. I realize that that's ha, 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 eight-year-olds are on it. That's why I'm not on it. Eight-year-olds are on it, which is why I've never been on it, really. I've had staff do it. But in the last week, I've had fun posting stuff on Facebook. And strangely enough, this morning, I woke up at dawn. And this, contrary to what you think about me, I woke up at dawn. As Hemingway said, he never missed the dawn no matter how much he drank the night before, which was very noble of him at the time. And I always admired that. I don't always catch the dawn. I caught it this morning, and it was stunning. I put it up on Facebook. That didn't attract that much attention. The picture of Teddy watching the sunrise caught the attention. It's still dogs and women that attract the most uh, attention to anything you do in the world. Go figure. Probably chocolate as well. Who knows? But the thing is, I was amazed to see how intelligent my dog is. He saw me looking at the sunrise through, through another door. I come in the living room. And there's the little fella sitting on my armchair with his head, little teeny head. He's staring at the sunrise, just peeking up over the horizon. You say that uh, animals don't, uh, they're, they're known as sentient creatures for a reason. See, sentient creatures. It's a word that's not used anymore in a world that's become demoralized, dehumanized, and homogenized. People don't even know what sentient creature means anymore, but he is a sentient creature. Now, speaking of which... As you know, Obama's given away the store, debased the military to the point where no one even knows if it can fight a war anymore. There's no leadership. I mean, you take away... You remember the old cowboy and Indian movies that you watched as a kid? Well, I don't think they made them in your day if you're younger than me. When I was a kid, there were cowboy and Indian movies. And it was well known that if you, if you kill the chief, the Indians couldn't fight. That's what Obama has done to the military. He's put in an incompetent moron at every level. And including the Defense Department itself, I never saw anything like it. The guy couldn't finish a sentence without almost crying. That's the new defense secretary. But nevertheless, we have a very dangerous situation that's emerged. I'm sure Bernie Sanders would be a great commander-in-chief. Nothing like an anti-American, socialist, communist spitter, uh, draft dodger to be commander-in-chief. Yes, sir! I could just see the Marines, the special forces, saluting Bernie Sanders. That would be the end of the road. But, but don't laugh. This country is so sick that I could see a wild card like that freak becoming president very much along the lines of how Hollande, a very similar weakling coward, became the premier of France. Same thing, socialist. Drove all people of money crazy. They wanted to leave the country. In fact, Depardieu became a Russian citizen. Not that he's a prize. Depardieu is some prize. Hates America. Let him stay in Russia where he belongs. But anyway, you want to see a, a real serious problem? Chinese space weapons revealed. I know, I'll go to sleep now. You know, I'll go to sleep. Bill Gertz is a defense reporter for Washington Times. And he says China has now such advanced space weapons programs that they can destroy or jam U.S. satellites and limit American combat operations around the world. I will not read you the article. They can knock our satellites out of the air 
at lower and higher orbits. Well, they're on de under development to do that. They're developing co-orbital anti-satellite weapons. On and on and on. You know, I linked it up on michaelsavage.com. You say, well, what can you do about it? Well, for one, you can get rid of an anti-American, anti-military, anti-family, anti-church administration. You can do that. You could fire them. Couldn't you do that? Now, if you think I'm anti-immigrant, you're a fool. You're a racist. What I've discovered is that these Hispanic mobs that spit at Trump supporters, they're the most vicious racists in the country. That's right. You heard me. And you've got to give it back to them. There's a video going around of a Hispanic troublemaking uh, all around bad person screaming against Trump, wearing an insulting t shirt. So he gets in the face with uh, one of the Trump supporters who spits in his face because people have had enough of these people who think they can come here illegally and take over the country and they're standing up to them. That's why they support Trump. I'm telling you, you've got to stand up to them. They're out of control. All of these radical groups have been empowered by Barack Hussein Obama. That's why they're acting up because they've been empowered by the president of the United States to act up and basically take over the middle class of the country and intimidate you by bullying you. In plain old English, it's bullying. But having said that, I want to move on to another topic, which is immigration itself. Many of you say that anyone who opposes illegal immigration is a racist because you've been taught to do that to scare people. Well, I would argue that people who scream racism at every turn are the biggest racists in the country. And let me give you my position on immigration again, in case you missed it. Borders, language, culture, borders, language, culture, borders, language, culture. We need an orderly, legal immigration plan and program. I've said that. I'm not going to beat you up with this all over again. But I want to give you an anecdote about what I actually think of immigration. Last night I went to dinner. I didn't want to drive because I had a drink in my house. And I was warned by my son, who's ten times smarter than me, never drive when you have as much as a drink because the cops are vicious. Instead of going after the crack dealers and the murderers, they'll pull a housewife over who had a beer. We understand how that works. So I don't drive if I had a drink. I usually either have a driver. Last night I used Uber. Woman picked me up, young lady, got me to the restaurant. That's another experience unto itself. Let me tell you all about that one another day. But when I finished the dinner, I hit the Uber app. It didn't work. I had to call my assistant to hit the Uber app on his phone to make it work. Got picked up about eight minutes later. Got in the car with Teddy. Now, every time I call Uber, I'm afraid I'm going to get a fanatical jihadi who says no dogs allowed. In which case, I'm ready to, I'm ready to fight with them. I'm telling you right now, they're not, they're not taking me over nor my country. I'd call the police before I'd give in to one of them. I'd tell them to go back to the hellhole he came from if he doesn't like dogs. Go back where you came from. This is America. But he didn't. Guy picks me up. He's an African. We start to talk. And we start talking about family. I figure that's something that, you know, all races, all countries can relate to. He was a big man, great voice. And I'm talking the ride was 11 minutes. That's all it was. And as it turns out, we talked about children and how he raises his children, how I raise my children. Very similar. Very, he's a father at home with three or four children. He's from Nigeria. And very respectful. You know, everything was yes, sir, and that kind of thing. And, you know, I find that respect generates respect in people. It's an amazing thing. Conversation stayed in a very even keel. And then when he dropped me at my house, I gave him a $20 tip. I didn't know you're not supposed to tip on Uber. I figure if a guy's working cab, he, you know, what do I care? He didn't know who I was. But I know he's a family man. He's struggling. He's raising children. He's trying to do it the right way. So I gave him a $20 tip. I'm telling you exactly the way it is. The next words were very interesting. I said to him after I gave him the tip, not before, I said, do you ever listen to talk radio? He said, yes, I do. And I saw his eyes widen when he looked focused on me. And he said, are you the great Michael Savage? He says, oh, man, I listen to you every day. He said, you are absolutely the greatest. You're like a god to me. Now, ask yourself a question. How is it that a black African male can love this show? Well, the answer is the same way a Haitian cab driver loves this show in New York City. I remember I was in New York a couple, a year and a half ago, and a Haitian drove me to WABC. Another big fan of the show. If you listen to what the media tells you, you're going to get a distorted view of reality. The only reality that you should recognize is the reality that you find in the real world. That's the world of the real, the real world, the street world. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you get this or not? 
So I'm saying that even, well, I guess I'm saying two things. I'm saying I'd like to see a million Africans from Nigeria who are Christians come in. See, he was a Nigerian Christian, which is why he came here to work hard, why he understands America, why he fits in with America, why he loves the savage nation. Do you get what I'm saying to you? And why is Obama bringing in Syrian Muslims instead of Syrian Christians? Why is Obama kicking Syrian Christians out of the country who've been sitting here waiting for months to be accepted? I'll let you figure that one out as well. There's got to be a compatibility with the nation or the nation dies. See, a house divided cannot stand. You can't tell that to Hollywood because they're too drug-addled to understand that. They're brain dead. They're stupid. That's why they're rallying around Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. These people are digging their own graves. How come people who are such high earners want to pay more taxes? They're insane. Liberalism is a mental disorder. Do you understand it? Ever? Have you ever understood this? Okay. Phone number is 855-400-7282. Let's take some calls. I've given you my opening. Whatever the topic is that relates to it. And... Uh, you know, it's a Thursday. It's a nice day. It's a nice day out there. Let's have some rock and roll now. I would like to hear I, what we play, the, the Impalas. I ran all the way home, which I still remember from, oh, my flat top days at Jamaica High School. I did run all the way home to get away from my father. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Then I would tune into a press conference. Welcome to the, to the Savage Nation. So boring. I mean, politics are just so boring. How is it that such boring men and women wind up running the world. Why is it that the most boring people in school, the most devious, the people who smell the worst, the people who wear the worst shoes and have the worst haircuts wind up running the world? How is that even possible? Bernard, WABC, what's your topic, Bernard? Hi, my topic is immigration. Hello? Okay, make your point already. Stop, you're not on a telephone. Okay, hold on, I gotta lower it. Hi. My topic is immigration. I, I'm a Jewish person, and this is probably something you could understand. My mother would have been a lampshade had the immigration not opened up in Cuba. During no, your mother, you know, your mother would have been a lampshade were it not for the American soldiers who died liberating the concentration camps and killing Hitler. You, you have it half right. Right, but now, my, my, after serving in a concentration camp, they, during the war, the only one that accepted them was Cuba. And my grandfather was released from a concentration camp, and along with his wife, came broken to Cuba in 1943. I, I understand, but we're not talking about Cuba. I'm glad your, your grandparents survived Hitler. That's wonderful. That's why you're here. I am talking about what immigrants are doing in this country now. I, I know my feeling is based on that I wouldn't be here today. So, but that's, so, See, this is the problem. You're, you're myopic. To have a myopic view of a discussion is not a discussion. That's like talking over a pickle barrel somewhere with someone. And you're saying, well, here's my experience about immigration. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about immigrants into America. Do they contribute or not contribute to the country? That's what we're saying. And your, your, my call screen it says immigrants give back more than they take from America. How do you know that's true when it's false? Because I'm an average person that's an immigrant. As if forget school and free hospitals, most of them need money for food to provide goods and services. Bernard, Bernard you, and look, you, you sound like a nice guy, but you're very naive. Every study has shown that over 70% of illegal immigrants, 70%, receive some form of public assistance. Do you know that? What is that public assistance compared to what they really need? You mean we should give them more? No. If, if the person needs $20,000 to live on, what do you think the public assistance is going to give? 200 bucks? Oh, you mean it's not enough? We should give them more. I see. You're a real good, you're a very good liberal. And where's the money come from, Bernard? Have, in order for them to survive, they have to... Bernard, where does the money come from that you want to give away to the illegal immigrants? Where does it come from? It doesn't come from. It comes from making them legalize. Perhaps, Bernard, perhaps. no, no, don't double talk me 